Welcome along to My Worst Nightmare. It's predictions time. And without further ado, let's go to Sam Parkin to find out why this is my worst nightmare ahead of round 41 in the championship. Are you taking a paste in, mate, basically? Um, however, you did get the better of me on Good Friday. You got 12 to my 10. Still thinking about got... the bad news. Yeah, I'm just uh, just giving you a little little taste first. Um, you actually got three on the nose on Good Friday. Anyway, it's all irrelevant to what I'm going to lead on to. But 12-10 in your favour on Good Friday. However, Easter Monday, 14 points for me, one for you. Do you want to tell me what the one was for? Can you even remember? I think it no. was the Leeds victory, was it? I think it maybe came in so the last I didn't game. Get one outcome through the whole through the whole round. By the way, I had Ipswich Southampton two two, and Sam had three two, and that went from two two to three two in the you know with seven seconds of the game to go. Which obviously, as an Ipswich fan, I will take all. You're day not the long, story but... here, mate. I don't know why you're still talking. I got fourteen <laughs> points. <laughs> Uh, I called, well, the only ones I want to, I called Birmingham, I called Borough, but I called Ipswich three, Southampton two, that's, and Leeds three. That's a good shout. One. You could have got a bonus point for a five-goaler yeah. there on three-two as well. So anyone who's uh, watched the podcast and heard me waxing lyrical about Dan, Dan James's third goal for <laughs> Leeds, there was, uh, there was another reason that I jumped off my sofa as well, because I knew that was going to be an additional trois points. For, for, for me um, as well. So 14 just, anyway, grand total. Just address grand your total? behaviour on Easter Monday night. I found the um, flood of WhatsApp messages I received disrespectful yeah. and that's really got me wound up to make to make the comeback, Sam. Um, can you just address that behaviour, please? Yeah, I don't, I don't know why. I suppose like I didn't have a bet <laughs> run in or there was, you know, there's nothing really on it. It's just pride, but yeah, there, there was something just inside me that was just, I was pretty elated. I was elated when the Ipswich winner went in. I was like, I called that. And then obviously when Dan James did it a couple of hours later, I was like, I'm on that as well. Um, so, yeah. And I've been playing catch up, haven't I, through the majority of the season. I so reckon tenant. I've been leading for about four months. You've led pretty much since the first week. So, anyway, grand total at the moment, one five two one four nine in in my favour. Moving day, they call it in golf. Easter. <laughs> Easter is very much moving day for, for us as well. Good um, Easter Monday was moving day. Tremendous. If, if anyone in the comments would like to defend my honour in the face of such blatant disrespect here from Sam Parkin, please uh, feel free to do so. But, mate, I've got skin in the game today. I'm going to take this, take this really, really seriously. Round 41 predictions. Get yours down there. In the comments, if you get the correct outcome, give yourself a point. If you get the correct scoreline, Sam Parkin got four of them last round, which is uh, pretty good. I'll give him that. Um, give yourself three points and give yourself a bonus point ahead of the round for your most outlandish prediction. We need something maybe with five or more goals or a big underdog victory. Sam, you want to go first? Or second. I know you're looking at game number two, so you're definitely going to go first, aren't you? Yeah, I'll go first. I would like to go first, yeah. Away you go, Sammy. Rotherham versus Plymouth. Uh, I said on the podcast, I mean, this, uh, this is really difficult. This this could be, this literally could be anything. Uh, oh, are they going to go there and have a go, Argyle? You know, like shackles off and have a right go. There's something inside me saying it's going to be low scoring. Do you know what? For that reason, I think it's going to be low scoring. I'm going to go for a carbon copy of those relatively recent narrow away wins. I'm going to go for a 1-0 Argyle win. Don't ask me why. But that's what I, I can sense it. 1-0. Terrible game. That, Tense. That would relegate Rotherham if my maths is correct. Um, so I was going to back Argyle because I've backed them to survive. And I wonder if they'll get a little... A little kind of um, new manager bounce, even though I don't believe in such a thing. Um, 
You've gone one nil. So I'll back both teams to score. I am going to back Plymouth. So apologies, Rotherham fans, although they probably all stop watching me as we've backed them to lose for about 10 of the last 11 games. Um, Rotherham one, Plymouth two. And here we go to the East Anglian derby, the only game of the season that makes me feel sick for a week before it. So I'm going to get this out of the way really quickly, Sam. And I've already been asked this many times this week. I did joke that I would give a different score on every platform that I'm on, but I'm not going to do that. Honours even, right down the middle. I'm playing it. Norwich one, Ipswich one. Yeah, I mean, they've been brilliant at home, haven't they, Norwich? So for that reason and for, you know, the the atmosphere, what it would mean for Norwich, obviously not only for their pursuit of the playoffs, but to derail Ipswich, I, I just can't see Ipswich going there and winning. I think there's just too much on it, too much emotion on it for Norwich. So I'm going to have to agree with you, but I will go for a carbon copy to what played out at Portman Road. I'll go for a 2-2. Two -two. Blackburn versus Southampton, the Alan Shearer derby. You are up first, Sammy. Well, yeah, I, I was kind of bullish, wasn't I, when we did the Southampton section? Um, people probably tuning in will probably expect me and you to say right that's it Southampton ready yourselves for the playoff campaign because you're you're done I'm not so sure I think they'll take a lot from that that performance the other day um Blackburn have had that bumper win but how much is that to do with them and how much is that to do with Sunderland albeit they improved greatly in that Ipswich performance I'm going to go for Southampton to win by the odd goal 2-1 Blackburn are going to be super, super confident, aren't they? After winning 5-1, obviously, at Sunderland. Although playing Sunderland and playing Southampton is a different different kettle of fish. Um, I can't come on here and say Blackburn, uh, Southampton played really well at Portman Road. There's something there for them. They'll feel wounded, like you said. So, yeah, I'm going to back a Southampton win. Um, you've taken the nice two one up, so I will go Blackburn nil, Southampton two, and we'll keep it close. Cardiff City versus Hull City, and it's me up first. And Hull were our cause for concern. Cardiff won at Coventry, but with two kind of deflected own goals, didn't they, from Kitching? Do I see Hull going there and winning? Possibly not. I think I might go... I'm either going to draw, Sam, or I might gamble a little bit on a Hull away win and a bounce back after the winless run. Let's throw you a line here. Cardiff 1, Hull 2. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking along the same lines, a narrow Hull win. Um, I've already gone, what, well, this will be my third away win. Why not? That's what I'm feeling. Sunderland won there and won there comprehensively, didn't they? I, I don't think Cardiff are a good side, particularly. I mean, that's kind of, with retrospect of, of seeing them in that, that derby against Swansea where I thought they were miles off it. And if they can't rally themselves for that type of game, I think this may be a difficult proposition for them again. I'm going to go for 1-0. Whole city. And you are up first, Sam, and I'm glad you're up first on this one because it's a really interesting one. Coventry versus Leeds. I have to start doing some home wins, aren't I? But I don't see it coming here. I just think that I think it's going to be difficult for Coventry. This is a really vital uh, Saturday, but a vital three game block. Um, Leeds. Southampton, Manchester United, doesn't get harder, really, for them. Um, I think Leeds will be too strong. I think there'll be a bit of space for them on the old counter. I'm going to go for a 3-1 away win. I think this is Leeds' hardest game. 
I agree. And their biggest chance of dropping points. But you know how that stadium is and you know what the Leeds away end will be like. And I bet you they'll be shooting towards it in the second half. And I think they might get over the line late in the game, maybe after minute 75. Coventry 1, Leeds United 2, Sam. And we're going to move on to a huge game at Huddersfield. Huddersfield versus Millwall. Millwall will be in real trouble again if they lose this, won't they, given they'd be giving up points to a direct rival. So I think they're going to go there and batten down the hatches. Set plays are going to be absolutely vital for both sides. And I think they're both going to score one from a set play. I'm wondering if I can get a bonus point out of that, but you're not going to allow it, are you? Huddersfield one, Millwall one. No, I'm not going to give you a bonus point, uh, but I like. I was mine. saying both goals from set plays. You, okay. I don't get one for that. No, no, no. No, no. okay. <laughs> um, I'll give you an outcome. Um, which means one team's going to get three points. Is that enough for a uh, a bonus point? I'm going to go for Huddersfield to win here. And I'm going to go for Huddersfield to make it interesting over the course of the next few weeks. I back them to stay up, I think, on when we did the podcast last week. I'm going to go for Mill to lose back to back and then set up. I think they play Leicester at home next Tuesday. I think I'm going to set that up nicely. Mill still in trouble, maybe to upset the apple cart there against the uh the uh team battling for automatic. Promotion. I love this arc of narrative, Sam. <laughs> It's what I kind of did before Easter Monday and it paid off. Do you know what I mean? We had that little, you know, game to focus on previously on the Good Friday. And then you had to like, you know, devise the little outcomes in your mind. Um, I'm going to go for Huddersfield to beat Millwall by two goals to one. Sam, I can't give you a bonus point for a 2-1 home win, mate. It needs oh, right, mate. it needs more goals. Um, no we, we need something later in the, later in the show. Um, quick pause for the cause as ever. We are brought to you in association with Match Bingo. Thank you, everybody, for joining in the fun over on Match Bingo. Uh, This weekend, um, I've got all the games up here. Right at the top there, you can play the Bingles game for free, which is good fun. That's not an in-game. That's the EFL games. And uh, you're just waiting for a goal in any of your games to pop up. Really good fun bingo style there. Plenty of action in the Premier League. As well, in the early kickoff, Sam, you can have a free card for Crystal Palace versus Manchester City to win part of a £275 prize pot. But the big money is in the big game this weekend in the Premier League. Sunday, 7th of April, at a weird half past three kickoff, Manchester United Liverpool, £1,000 prize pot. Remember, Our main man, Paul, um, had a big go um, winning £1,000 on the East Anglian derby. And I think uh, once we've got that confirmed, I think we might get a bumper prize pot for that as well. I'll certainly be suggesting it to my friends over at Match Bingo. As ever, please play responsibly and let the guys know that we have sent you uh, by clicking on that there. QR code. Right, we are back. What am I calling this? The Gary Rowett Derby, Leicester City versus Birmingham City, Sam. I'm just trying to get a bonus point in somewhere now. That's all my <laughs> thinking about. Um, Don't let that confuse you. I've been quite... You need my um, advice after a 14-1 win. I've been quite bullish about this result. I think Leicester will be too strong. Uh, I think Birmingham are going to stay up. I think uh, what we saw... On Monday, he's going to play out in a couple other games. I think they'll win by a solitary goal to nil, and it'll be enough for Birmingham, probably another two occasions. Um, but I think Leicester will be too strong. But I think, yeah, they'll be in the game. I'll go for a 2 0 home win. I was heading that way, thinking, oh, Leicester will get in front. Birmingham will keep it tight. It'll be 1 0. They'll have a bit of an attack at the end of the game and make it two. But that's what you've said. So let's assume it'll only take the one goal then. And I'll go for Leicester City one, 
Birmingham nil. Um, with my caveat to the Birmingham fans, I totally agree with what Sam Parkin just said that Rowett in the home games will will do enough. <clears throat> Middlesbrough versus Swansea. I'm quite high on Middlesbrough at the moment, Sam. They're on good form. I think they've got 14 points in six games. Swansea have done that thing where they perked up, they look safe, and then they've you know dropped off a little bit, haven't they? So I'm going to back Borough, and I'm going to back both teams to score. And I think this might be a chance to play the bonus point then. No, I'm in a real competitive game here. So I'm not going to do that. Standard prediction then, Middlesbrough 3, Swansea 1. Yeah, it's whether, it's whether Middlesbrough can continue just churning out the victories and giving themselves a bit of an outside chance of... They can still make it, can't they? It'd be miraculous, but um, I think it was a must win at the weekend, which they did. I was thinking about a bonus point here, but no, I'm just going to go for more of the same. I'm going to go for Middlesbrough to win and Middlesbrough to win. Same scoreline as before, 2-0. QPR versus Sheffield Wednesday. Sam, your boys and the mouthwatering matchup on the Championship Checking Podcast. Yeah. Really difficult, really difficult to see if QPR got three wins on the spin. You said it earlier. I think the draw is a good result for Rangers. Uh, so I'm going to go for that. But I think they might have a go at each other. So for that reason, I'll go for another 2-2. Oh. Agree with everything you said. I think QPR might be able to do the three in a row. I don't know where that leaves Wednesday. If I went for a thriller and locked in the five goals, Sam, can I have a bonus point if I were to say QPR three, Sheffield Wednesday two? Yeah, bonus point, no problem. Bonus point played, and that's Rangers safe and a statue of Marty Sifuentes built in Shepherd's Bush. On we go. Stoke versus West Brom. I think I quite like this as a low-scoring draw, um, Sam, although... Ross Brown can't keep drawing. They'll surrender fifth place if they keep drawing, won't they? I know they've got a cushion, but quite high on Stoke as well. I'm going to go all in on Stephen Schumacher. Sorry, because I love Carlos Corberon. Stoke one, West Brom nil. Not sure about that, but I've said it now. So um, on you go, Sam. That that was my immediate thought, but then I just just something inside me just thinks you know, West Brom are a decent outfit. Don't think maybe early part of the season they might have rolled over here. I'm not not so sure here. So for that reason, I'm going to play my one one back to back one ones for Stoke at home. You know what I mean? Just creeping nearer to survival. Sunderland v Bristol City, and I think Sam Park is about to play his bonus point. No, I've, I mean, it could be anything, so I don't think... <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it literally could be anything. Um, Bristol City won back-to-back, -back, didn't they? Brilliant, over, yeah. um Over Easter, Sunderland won well, then got thumped. Oh, it's a big game for Sunderland, isn't it? Mm. At home. Um, oh God, I really don't know what I want to do here. I don't think Bristol City are going to win three on the spin. Do, 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 do. Bristol City going to win three on the spin. Mm, mm, I want to put a draw again, but that's that's. I'm going to have a Sunderland to win. <laughs> Went through all three outcomes in about ten seconds. That was amazing. I'm going to have a Sunderland to win by two <laughs> goals to one. <laughs> oh dear! I don't know why I'm laughing when you beat me fourteen one. Uh, I am going to go for Bristol City to win three games in a row. And I'm also going to go for them to win three games in a row by the same scoreline of 1-0. I think they're nicely set up. I think they'll fancy um, going to Sunderland where it all doesn't seem well and the season has fizzled out. Sunderland nil, Bristol City 1. And finally, um, God knows what I'm going to say for this one. Watford versus Preston. Um, do you know what? A Watford fan commented on one of the videos, said, Ben, don't underestimate our weekend. 
we didn't win, but they drew against uh, West Brom away and against Leeds. That's that's a fair point, isn't it? Um, so, even though Preston always stitched me up, so the Preston fans will be will be pleased because I'll be wrong about Preston yet again. Watford two, Preston one, Sam. Well, um, everyone will realise that this has got to be something outlandish because I'm playing my bonus point. And for the reasons you just stated, and I have heard a lot of compliments being thrown Tom Cleverley and Watford's way after the weekend. Um, I'm going to side with them. I think Preston need to win, needs to have a go. I think the shackles are off for Watford. I love this. Six goal thriller. <laughs> Watford, Watford four. Preston North End 2. Right, Sam, because I'm a nice guy, I'm giving you two bonus points if that comes in, okay? That's worth five points to you. That is, I think that's the most outlandish prediction you've ever done in the prediction. Really? So no, I'm... I just, no, there's not a lot to play for for Watford. They're, <laughs> they're looking quite fun going forward. I think Preston need to have a bit of a go, probably. So I think it I think it's be tremendous. And I'm here for end. it. Um, guys, get involved. Um, obviously, it's getting a bit serious in here now. Sam's overtaken me. But get your um, predictions in via the comments. Normal rules with predictions, guys. We need them before the games. And nobody likes someone who's wise after the event, Sam. One of those little muggy people who doesn't put their own predictions in and then has a pop after the fact. That's not the right way to live your life. I mean, you live your life how you please, but I, I wouldn't be live in mind like that. Uh, Sam, I'm going to give you one more opportunity to apologise for your flagrant disrespect in the face of your 14-1 win um, mm -hmm. last week. <laughs> Would you like to take that opportunity or double down? It's a landslide, isn't it? 14-1. <laughs> um, yeah, I, re I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed <laughs> it. Um, and it's getting serious now, isn't it? So... Yeah, be prepared, mate. If it goes that way again, I'll be giving you I'll be giving you a stick once more, especially when the the four two fill was in from Vicarage Road. You'll get a voice note and all sorts. Go on, uh, Hornets. He's doubled down, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching the predictions. Now you might see a YouTuber with millions of subscribers and views a week driving a Bentley. It's a bit more modest, I have to say, when you're covering the championship. So if you can find a few quid each month to support over on Patreon or by hitting the join button here. You are making the world of difference for myself, Shaley and Enid.